and why you should not run away from it. You should understand it. It's a lot of um, maybe um, fad in this ecosystem, and uh, that's why the Postgres room yesterday was also fairly crowded. I think it's worth noting that we have a very good, diverse community. Um, I work at Percona. We make 100% open source tools, and before that, I did MariaDB Server and MySQL. <coughs> So most importantly, I think um, MySQL is nearly 23 years old. It's basically past being a uh, voting adult. Pocono server is also about nine years old. MariaDB, eight years old. It was probably worth uh, mentioning uh, Drizzle, which we can learn some stuff about. Uh, how many of you heard of or used Drizzle before? Heard of, OK. OK, how many of you heard of or used WebScale SQL before? OK, uh, significantly a lot more. So um, you, know, you kind of learn uh, in these experiments that uh, companies need different things. And uh, WebScale SQL actually posted a, a very good uh, sort of goodbye message in uh, December of 2016. And uh, they still meet up every year at the Percona Live. And actually, a lot of the features in WebScale SQL um, probably also made its way into um, MariaDB server as well as uh, Percona server, and some even directly into MySQL itself. And uh, we don't have much learnings from Drizzle, uh, b besides the whole don't have all the core developers hired by a single company argument. <laughs> uh, so at some stage, we will learn more about that. Uh, also, a shout out to MariaDB, who just celebrated its eighth birthday. February 1st was the GA release, so kudos, Monty. Uh, this cake is not not obviously mine. It's uh, it's it's Lixon Ping's cake. I stole it from his LinkedIn profile. He works at Alibaba and on MariaDB as well. He's not here, but he is at Five Fostem. So, Daniel Van Eden is also not here. Sick. Uh, he actually created this, and uh, I ended up modifying it to give you sort of an idea of where we are in terms of a branch. And I know it's really small, so this one should be better. Not, not by much, maybe. <laughs> How do I do that? <laughs> it's fine. You don't need to see. You, you don't need to see me. That. <laughs> so, so. Oh, no, you don't want that. You want you, you switch, switch it off. Oh. oh, OK. Anyway, very nice graph. Uh, it's generated. Uh, Daniel started this project like five years ago. It was based on something else uh, on relational databases. And uh, it's very worth noting that in MySQL 5.5, which is what started lots of things, uh, you'll realize that that's when InnoDB scalability was focused on. And I think we have a talk later about uh, performance from Dimitri, who's here somewhere. And um, 5.6 also brought along a lot of optimizer improvements. And in, in fact, MariaDB 5.3 also did that as well. Um, Percona Server 5.5 uh, brought in group commit in the binary log, which was ported from MariaDB server. Uh, but then after that, Percona uses the regular 5.6 implementation. Um, MariaDB Server 10.2 actually gets some things from MySQL 5.7, which is InnoDB. It, yes, Monty. Yes, uh, that, that was in the previous slide. Uh, I didn't want to focus on that. that, that it's very hard to see. <laughs> very hard to see from afar. So anyway, this, this graphic is available at Daniel Van Eden's uh, GitHub repository. And the pull request for the modified version, which now includes the GAF cluster, MariaDB 10.2 pulling InnoDB. So this line here means it's pulling InnoDB as opposed to pulling ExtraDB. And, uh, Obviously, we're both waiting for 8.0 and 10.3 to come out. So um, 8.0.4 is in the second release candidate. So my presumption is we'll see a generally available release soon. And uh, MariaDB Server 10.3.4 is in a se second beta. So I guess soon we'll see a release candidate as well. Um, but this is a, a general idea of where the, the branches and forks and uh, community has uh, spread, really. And uh, of course, uh, just to annoy Mark a little bit, uh, there is also bits about Drizzle <laughs> there. 
So in terms of uh, the open source community, I think uh, MariaDB is uh, excellent, uh, uh, taking external contributors as well as committers, so you can actually commit code directly to the MariaDB tree. Also participates in Google Summer of Code, which helps get younger blood into uh, server development. MySQL 5.7 has taken patches as well, um, say virtual columns from uh, MariaDB from the same guy called Andrey Zhakov, which became generated columns but was also heavily rewritten. And, uh, MySQL also takes lots of contributions from Procona. So actually, if you look at, uh, and even uh, Facebook and so forth, so if you look at the release notes, you'll find that there are all these companies that are credited. And those tend to be like 70 pages long if you look at the PDF of where the credits come from. And it's actually quite a long list from MySQL. Contributions are obviously welcome, but you can't commit directly to the code base, which is um, something that's probably more or less always been true. There's also a MySQL Community Contributor Award program that uh, Oracle runs. And actually, the two people probably running that are sitting right here in the front. And they're also running this room. So kudos. For Corona, it's, um, it's similar. You can you know, report bugs. You can ask for features. But you can't commit to the tree either, even though it's all on GitHub. Um, also, these things are contributor agreements that are probably worth noting. Oracle requires you to sign an Oracle contributor agreement. Uh, I understand some corporates have issues signing that. Uh, MariaDB uh, also has a contributor agreement or the option of contributing with BSD new, such that you don't have to sign a contributor agreement. And that maybe makes things uh, easier for people. But also, um, when, you come, when it comes to contributed code, code is not just something you drop and then you run away. Code is something that requires maintenance uh, actively. And uh, what is the state of, commu of community-maintained code is also um, really uh, important to look at. Um, people ask, is MySQL dying? Uh, so I, I, I stood out at the Percona booth yesterday, and lots of people were like, MySQL is dying. Oh, we don't want to use MySQL because Oracle owns it. Um, those are not technical reasons why you, you should not use MySQL. Um, and MySQL is far from dying. It's uh, clearly exaggerated. Uh, we're getting better MySQL all the time. Every time there's a new release, it gets better. Uh, there are a lot of external contributors. I think pretty much everyone in this audience is an external contributor of some sort. Uh, there's lots of people using it. There's tons of shared knowledge. I mean, look at the amount of shared knowledge on making InnoDB work well. It's amazing. And Oracle has been actually a great steward because they've not actually killed MySQL development. They've just enhanced MySQL development, which you can see in you know, 5.6, 5.7, 8.0 even. Like, the release candidate is actually r worth using. In fact. There's this website called The Complete List of Features run by a guy called Morgan Taka, who used to work on MySQL as well. And this just lists features in 5.7 that are highlights. And I think there are more than 150 features that are highlighted on that list. The documentation is now so complex for MySQL that I think if you print out the PDFs, you might actually hit some 4,000 pages. And a couple of months ago, I think Giuseppe, uh, uh, Fred, and I, we were having a chat with someone who wanted to know more about grants. And actually, if you look at the documentation for grants, it's actually fairly complex without knowing, without having years of experience do, dealing with grants, it may not be super easy for a newbie to pick up on it, as such they do grant all, asterisk that asterisk, which is not, not what they're supposed to be doing. So actually, there's a lot of new features that a lot of people don't know exists, and um, maybe don't use yet. And it's kind of sad, because it's been out for more than two years. So you know, one of my favorite ones is online buffer pool resize and how everything starts becoming more online as we are able to grow things nowadays. And of course, things like multi-source replication, even though it came to MariaDB first, it is also present in 5.7. I personally also like the JSON, MySQL shell, and the XDEV API and the X protocol because I think it's super cool. Um, lots of people nowadays like to do stuff with you know, MongoDB, and this sort of gives you uh, an insight fr from that standpoint. Also, GIS functionality. Um, I spoke to people yesterday as well saying, hey, you know, we're using Postgres. We used to use MySQL, but then we use Postgres now because of GIS. But the GIS functionality in MySQL 5.7 is actually uh, heavily underrated, right? It's actually, it's not, not only is it good, it can also do stuff like Google Maps can do. And I think Norvald, uh, who may or may not be here, has also given a great talk at the GIS uh, track uh, about GIS in MySQL. So there are lots of things that people don't really know about, which is unfortunate. And that's also true for MariaDB. So 10.1 brought a whole bunch of new things. 
Stop transaction with consistent snapshot, to be fair, is now also in MySQL 5.7. Uh, Galera cluster being integrated, very cool. The first to introduce table space encryption. Um, InnoDB defragmentation, parallel replication, we'll probably have a talk about that as well later. Uh, the thread pool is highly useful from uh, being, being, being open source as, as well. And roles, SQL standard roles, which uh, Giuseppe will talk about later as well. Not the MariaDB variant, but the MySQL variant. 10.2 also brought uh, other features like InnoDB as the default InnoDB. Now that, that may be a play on, on words be, because uh, nowadays when you ask for something, you get something else. So for a long time, if you ask for InnoDB, you got ExtraDB. And in many Linux distributions, if you ask for MySQL, you get MariaDB. So <laughs> um, Pyrox is in alpha. There are obviously window functions and common table expressions, two things that are, are probably very useful. I like this a lot, the AWS key management plugin. Um, highly useful if you're going to use encryption because you don't want to use the file key management plugin. And of course, um, Oracle style execute immediate where you start seeing new, new stuff. And this is obviously not, these are not comprehensive lists of what's new. It's just stuff that's worth noting that you may not necessarily see in another distribution of MySQL. Ugh. Uh, Pocono Server for uh, five six and five seven also introduces other things. Pocono Server mostly focuses on wanting to be more manageable, more usable, more operationally useful. So things like the utility user, if you're running in um, in a in a you know in like say OpenStack for example, you may find use for something like the utility user where you have system access, but you can't actually look at the schema. And uh, if you, you, you the proxy protocol support, if you want to use maybe um, HA proxy, which supports the proxy protocol, uh, backup locks. Improvements around backups and extra backup. Then, of course, um, since we're going to talk about the ecosystem, uh, the server ecosystem anyway, here's a, here's a base blog post. I don't know how many of you have read it. Uh, it's, it's, it's worth reading. <coughs> Compatibility largely means that things are supposed to exist or occur together without problems or conflict. And uh, this is true even in, in computing. Why it really matters is because if People ask for a feature in one server, they may not get it in the next server because they not, they not necessarily drop in compatible. And MariaDB server is, after all, the default in pretty much every Linux distribution except Ubuntu. The latest Ubuntu does ship 5.7. I think it's worth noting from a Linux distribution or a more pragmatic standpoint, we should take a page out of the cloud operators. The cloud operators don't pass off MariaDB as MySQL or vice versa. That, that is true for Amazon, that is true for Microsoft. Um, that is true for Rackspace. They actually offer you multiple choices. And choice is actually probably a good thing because they, they, you, you realize very quickly like, hey, maybe I want to use InnoDB memcached for put get and, you, and that's not present, say, in, in some server. So Monty did ask a question earlier and he is in the audience. So uh, he, he did make a verbal commitment uh, a while ago about, about MySQL 5.6 should be comparable to MariaDB Server 10.1 as well as Tend to comparable to 5.7. Um, and till today, you actually get the description that it's an enhanced drop-in replacement for MySQL. And this is true because the data directory is the same, the port is the same. Um, but, that, but in terms of uh, feature compatibility, it may not necessarily be equivalent. Governance is obviously worth talking about. MariaDB has a corporation as well as a foundation, and I think that's really important that the foundation gets stronger. And today, you'll notice the foundation has foundation members from Booking.com, um, Visma, uh, Alibaba Cloud, IBM, WordPress.com, Microsoft, and even Tencent. So diverse representation in a foundation is, is a good thing. MySQL, for better or for worse, is actually governed by, by Oracle. and you know, as I said, people have um, negative connotations to a company that actually does good things. And Procona is governed by uh, a corporation called Procona Inc. It's also privately held and has never raised any funding before and has been around for like 11 years without funding. Um, so you've got you, you to know who's funding what. And uh, if you ask, you know, is there vendor lock-in in open source? Uh, that's something to also always, always think about overall. And that's, that's a, a bigger FOSTEM thing. So in terms of releases, um, here are a bunch of releases. You'll notice that uh, 10.1 and 5.7 were released maybe basically two days apart. And as I said, 10.3.4 is in beta. 
uh, beta 2 now, and MySQL 804 is in release candidate 2 now. So I'd suggest if you are interested, you should start looking at this stuff because, you know, if I'm a guessing person, you're going to see these generally available in like three months, give or take. And uh, Percona server, I, I don't list it here because it generally follows from a major release uh, anywhere between three to six months uh, behind. And uh, for example, a good, a good example is MySQL 8. Tree is already being worked on by the developers. Replication is important. And this I took straight out of the uh, MariaDB uh, knowledge base. Uh, it is definitely easier to migrate to MariaDB server, but it's harder to migrate away from MariaDB server in terms of from a replication standpoint. Uh, so I don't want to throw any Hotel California jokes here. Uh, there are obviously things that are different. So um, the default bin log format in Tantu is mixed as opposed to being row in MySQL. Uh, the annotate, annotation of row events is on. Time delayed replication is available in MariaDB Tantu as well. This I think is an extremely unique feature, DML only flashback, which allows you to roll back instances to an older snapshot. Uh, synchronous replication. Um, lots of people are very interested in things like Galera cluster. And uh, Galera cluster has, has spawned uh, two branches, so to speak. One's called MariaDB Galera cluster, which is built into MariaDB server. And of course, there's Percona XDB cluster with proxy SQL and, and an admin tool. And synchronous replication is probably going to play an even more important role uh, going forward. And Oracle has come up with something um, possibly similar. It's called group replication. And uh, it's, it's very tied with uh, MySQL SH. It's also very tied to uh, MySQL router. And, they have, and the product around it is called MySQL InnoDB cluster, which one could actually launch. And uh, Fred has a nice little video, I think, on YouTube. Maybe it takes you five minutes to watch the, the video. And uh, you could actually start your own little uh, InnoDB cluster and listen to his soothing voice. <laughs> So let's talk about the X protocol. Um, MariaDB server does not have that at the moment. Uh, so you can't use MySQL SH. And this consequently means you will not be starting up an InnoDB cluster. So this definitely means, from a synchronous replication standpoint, things are, are, are diverging. Encryption. MySQL 5.7 and MariaDB server 10.1 and greater both have encryption. Um, the MariaDB version does table space as well as table encryption based on the Google patch. And uh, MySQL only does table space encryption. You are required to use InnoDB file per table uh, for MySQL, but this has been the default for quite some time now. And as uh, logs, logs don't get encrypted in the MySQL variant today, but they are in the MariaDB variant. Uh, so MySQL bin log obviously has a bit of, a, of an issue in, in MariaDB, but uh, you can do uh, read from remote server and use the encryption plugin API as well as a plugin but it obviously adds some load to the server. I actually mentioned that it doesn't encrypt tables or logs. Yeah. Yeah. We'll do questions later. Security. Um, MySQL native password, which has been around since 4.1, I think, but renamed later. Uh, uses double SHA-1 uh, based authentication. And um, I guess that's not useful any longer. So MySQL has this thing called SHA-256 password since MySQL 5.6. You are more than encouraged to probably turn this on going forward. In fact, uh, there are some good, good blog posts uh, just last week about SHA-256 uh, as well as uh, MySQL 8. So beware. MariaDB follows this thing called uh, ed25519, which is the elliptic curve digital signature algorithm used by OpenSSH. Uh, this is another implementation. Uh, naturally, uh, they're both obviously not compatible, so probably worth noting that if you're creating users and migrating from one server to the other, you have to reset the passwords. Validate password is on by default in MySQL 5.7, so if you by default provide a poor password, it will actually um, tell you not to do that. And uh, SSL also has um, various differences. So SSL in 5.7 is pre-generated keys. Uh, it's, and you just need to turn it on in the client. And uh, there's also a utility called MySQL SSL RSA setup that's provided with MySQL 5.7 that you can use. Libraries are changing. So Yazl, I guess, 
change his name every every few years to Seattle, Seattle, Wolf SSL. Um, anyhow, ignore the name changes. Uh, it's all it's all going open SSL going forward. There are also user table changes. So if you write uh, scripts, oh dear, if you write scripts, it's worth noting that um, you need to actually <laughs> make note of the fact that uh, there are there are changes in the MySQL user table. Uh, password expiry does not uh, exist yet uh, from last I checked. Password last change as well as uh, lifetime is available in MySQL. Account locks and unlocks also pro probably important. Slides will be online, so I provide lots of links. Stuff that might matter to you. Uh, MySQL has had optimizer hints, um, query rewriting, um, optimize the trace, uh, which could be very useful. I think uh, at one stage, someone from Wikipedia, Hamey, wanted it, and he's speaking here later. I don't know if he's here later now. Um, MySQL super read-only mode. Ah, he's just here. MySQL super read-only mode, very important when you're doing automatic failovers to ensure that um, super user doesn't accidentally write. Uh, also, uh, something look we're looking forward to. And uh, a newer performance schema. When it comes to tools, um, if a tool requires the MySQL global transaction ID, so MySQL failover, replication admin, MHA for GTID based failover, which Yoshi writes, MySQL router, all this stuff will not work with um, MariaDB server. This only works with MySQL and, um, and uh, Perkona server. The external ecosystem is alive and kicking, right? So many good, good, good things. You've got toolkit, extra backup, proxy SQL, MaxScale. Uh, what else? Vitesse. Vitesse, I think we have a talk for Vitesse later. Orchestrator, definitely Shlomi will probably talk about it later. Sandbox, now in a new language even. So lots of people actually pay attention to um, making tools around MySQL. And I think that's why you should use it, right? Because it's very vibrant. It's a great ecosystem. When, when do you want to use MariaDB server today? So everything's about today, right? So I'm not talking about the betas uh, or the release candidates. A whole bunch of reasons why you'd probably want to use MariaDB today that uh, you may not, you, you may choose over, um, say, MySQL or Percona server. Also, a whole bunch of reasons why you'd want to use Percona server over, say, MySQL. So maybe you want you want to use Myrox, which is uh, you know fully uh, generally available. You want to use the Keyring Vault plugin for encryption. Um, you want column compression, maybe. You've outgrown MySQL for some reason. Percona server, great, great choice. And for everyone else, um, you know, I think the best is actually for you to use MySQL 5.7. It's been out for two years. It's pretty stable. It's well worth using. There is obviously the very near future, which I estimate to be less than three months. MySQL 8 also brings you things like roles, common table expressions, window functions, histograms. MariaDB Server 10.3 brings you Oracle support as well to some extent. System version tables I think is extremely cool. Uh, because it's coming out of the SQL, uh, I think, 2011 standard, possibly. Uh, you also got the semi-sync stuff uh, merged in uh, via Alibaba. SQL mode equals Oracle, I think, could be a, a game changer for people who are migrating from Oracle to um, another open source database. So what should you use today? Um, I think you should care about the innovation today. And most of the innovation I spoke about has already happened for at least two years, so both 5.7 and uh, 10. One has been around for about that long. Um, think about the features you need today. You definitely want freedom from, from uh, you know, vendor independence. Um, you want to always make sure that there are multiple support vendors supporting your um, product. Know the difference between a branch and, and a fork. And um, some, some might recognize this. Uh, Michael Stonebreaker said that uh, for Facebook, uh, MySQL would be a fate worse than death, so they made t-shirts. Um, I think mastering the ecosystem takes a lot of time, which is, which is some, something that you should invest in if you care about MySQL. And it's definitely not a fate worse than death for anybody, so you know, let's, 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 not, let's stop with the FUD and let's focus on you know, um, good stuff and making sure we're a strong ecosystem where people look at us as a first choice as opposed to saying, hey, let's try Postgres or MongoDB. Um, thank you for listening. And I have some time for questions. <laughs> yes. <laughs>